ignition and liftoff of Starliner and Atlas V. Wow, it finally happened. The Starliner took off to the stars after seven years of delays. This is truly a huge boost, saving the dying fate of Boeing, ULA, and even NASA. In addition to the congratulations from the space community, this victory for Starliner also made SpaceX CEO Elon Musk wholeheartedly applaud. However, somehow, Starliner still encountered issues while in flight. So, how did the first orbital flight of Starliner go? What's the problem with the Starliner? Does it affect the flight? How did Elon Musk react? Let's find out on today's episode of Alpha Tech. The third attempt was the charm for Boeing's Starliner mission after launching its first crewed flight test on June 5th in a milestone that has been a decade in the making. The new spacecraft's highly anticipated voyage with humans on board lifted off atop an Atlas V rocket at 10.52 a.m. from Cape Canaveral Space Force Station in Florida with favorable weather conditions at 90%. Although there were some concerns with cumulus clouds, they were not significant. Veteran NASA astronauts Butch Wilmore and Suni Williams finally got to fly into space on the spacecraft they had previously missed out on several times. The mission, known as the Crew Flight Test, is the culmination of Boeing's efforts to develop a spacecraft to rival SpaceX's Crew Dragon capsule and expand the United States' options for ferrying astronauts to the space station under NASA's Commercial Crew Program. The federal agency's initiative aims to foster collaboration with private industry partners. The successful flight marked the sixth inaugural journey of a crewed spacecraft in U.S. history, NASA Administrator Bill Nelson noted in a press conference in May. It started with Mercury, then with Gemini, then with Apollo, the Space Shuttle, then SpaceX's Dragon, and now Starliner, Nelson said. The flight then received congratulations from everyone especially notable wishes from Elon Musk. Congratulations on a successful launch, he posted on X. Although Musk was quite busy with the upcoming Starship launch scheduled for June 6, he still took the time to congratulate his competitor. Truly respectable. Of course, congratulations from Bill Nelson are indispensable. This is another milestone in this extraordinary history of NASA and I want to give my personal congratulations to the whole team that went through a lot of trial and tribulation. But they had perseverance, and that's what we do at NASA. We don't launch until it's right. Well, serves both as a congratulatory message and an encouragement for Boeing and NASA themselves in light of the technical errors that led to such extended delays. Another quiet congratulation for Boeing came from Blue Origin, with just a single word. Congratulations. We can sense their subdued tone. After all, following this successful launch of Starliner, Blue Origin remains the only major player in the American aerospace industry that has yet to send its rockets, spacecraft, or people into orbit. On the side of Boeing officials, their reactions were much more exaggerated. Boy, what a heck of a day it was today, Steve Stick, NASA's commercial crew program manager, said in a post-launch news briefing. Mark Nappy, vice president and program manager of Boeing's commercial crew program, said the successful liftoff was a significant milestone for the company. My boss was here today, my boss's boss was here today, and my boss's boss's boss was here today, so obviously it means a ton to us, Nappy said. However, while the excitement is spreading throughout the space community, an issue still persists on the Starliner spacecraft. Flight controllers have discovered two additional helium leaks. One leak is located in the top manifold one, and the other is in the port manifold one. These leaks are in addition to the small leak previously identified in port manifold two before the launch. The temporary solution for this is that top manifold one and port manifold one have been isolated, resulting in six reaction control jets being taken offline. Meanwhile, port manifold two remains open. Teams are currently addressing the problem, hoping everything will be okay at least until Starliner can rendezvous with the ISS. So, what happens if the gas leak becomes excessive and remains unaddressed? The likely result is that Starliner could go off course and return earlier than planned, because helium is used to pressurize the propellant for the maneuvering system. Think of these pressurized rockets like a helium balloon attached to a rocket nozzle. 
As the system loses pressure, the thrust and propulsion of the rocket decrease. This makes maneuvers more costly. The mission has a budget for these maneuvers, and it cannot exceed that budget. Furthermore, the degree to which pressure reduction affects performance may or may not be clearly defined. But you, I, and everyone else hope that luck will stay with Starliner throughout this journey. Godspeed. If everything goes smoothly for Starliner, the astronauts will spend just over 24 hours traveling to the space station. After docking around 12.15 p.m. Thursday, the Starliner capsule will join five other vehicles already docked at the orbital outpost, including one of SpaceX's Crew Dragon capsules. Two astronauts, Williams and Wilmore, are set to spend eight days living in the orbiting laboratory, joining the seven astronauts and cosmonauts already on board. Aboard Starliner is a crucial pump needed to fix the space station's urine processor assembly, which failed on May 29th. That urine processor takes all of the crew's urine and processes it in the first step of a water recovery system, said Dana Weigel, manager for NASA's International Space Station program. It then sends it downstream to a water processor which turns it into drinking water. The station's really designed to be a closed loop. Now, the urine has to be stored on board in containers, so Starliner's anticipated arrival to the space station can't come soon enough. On the pump change, we're going to get to that as soon as we can, said Joel Montalbano, Deputy Associate Administrator for NASA's Space Operations Mission Directorate. My hope is we get to it this week. If not, it'll be early next week. The astronauts will evaluate various aspects of Starliner's capabilities, including the performance of its thrusters, the functionality of their spacesuits within the capsule, and manual piloting in case they need to override the spacecraft's autopilot. Williams and Wilmore will also test Starliner's safe haven feature, designed to provide shelter for the space station crew in case of an emergency, as stated by Steve Stick during a May 31st news conference. When it's time to return, the astronauts will use the same Starliner capsule and parachute to land at one of several designated sites across the southwestern United States. NASA officials mentioned that astronauts Williams and Wilmore might enjoy a slightly extended stay aboard the station, with the earliest possible landing date being June 14th. We've got a prescribed landing date that goes along with this launch date, but I just want to emphasize that nobody should get too excited about that date, said Ken Bowersox, Associate Administrator for NASA's Space Operations Mission Directorate. We have to have a lot of conditions that are just right before we bring the Starliner home, and we're going to wait till the conditions are right, and we've accomplished the test objectives before we do that. The only issue mission teams are assessing is a system called a sublimation on Starliner, which provides cooling during the launch and landing phase, Stick added. What that does is it creates a block of ice, essentially, he said. And then as heat is passed into that ice box, a little thin layer of that ice turns into a vapor, and that rejects heat away. We used a little bit more water than we expected. The team will analyze the sublimation data to better understand the system's performance. Years of development delays, test flight issues, and other expensive setbacks have hindered Starliner's progress to the launch pad. In the meantime, Boeing's competitor in NASA's commercial crew program, SpaceX, has become the primary transportation provider for the agency's astronauts. When questioned about the relationship between Boeing and SpaceX, often seen as a rivalry, Mark Nappy stated that he believes others perceive it as a competition. We don't see it as a competition, Nappy said. We've got two providers that are going up to the International Space Station, and SpaceX is up there, and we're up there now as well. So, this is something that NASA has planned, and we've accomplished it. This mission could be the final major milestone before NASA deems Boeing's Starliner spacecraft ready for routine operations to deliver astronauts and cargo to the space station. Once Starliner is certified, the U.S. will have two ways of reaching the International Space Station, which was why the commercial crew program was started in the first place, Nelson said. And when we expand our fleet of spacecraft, what we're doing is expanding our reach to the stars, Nelson said. That's all for today's episode. Thank you so much for watching and see you next time. Watching and see